There's lots of content out there already about why you should be developing anonymously as a blockchain developer. What I haven't seen as much of is actually how you can do that, how you can create an anonymous profile and interact with other either third party protocols and DeFi projects or create your own. In this video, I'm going to be setting up an anonymous profile, a GitHub repository and some of the kind of social platforms that you'd use for a general DeFi project. My name is James Puccini and on this channel I create content about blockchain development and decentralized finance. If you want to stay up to date in these fields then consider subscribing and please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is to download a whole new browser. I'm using a separate browser for my anonymous profile. And that's going to separate my main work portfolio or my main kind of the work that I do creating these kind of videos from my anonymous developer kind of pseudonyms and the work that I do for them. And next, I'm going to have all them kind of the logins and that stored within that individual browser. I want to use a Chromium browser for this because I want to use things like MetaMask, which is only available on Chrome. Well, it might be available on other browsers as well, but um, I'm familiar with Chrome, so I'm going to use a Chrome-based browser or a Chromium-based browser. And we can scroll down here and find the seven best Chromium-based browsers. And not something that I'm fairly familiar with, but I don't have already. So I'm going to use Microsoft. No, I'm not going to use Microsoft Edge. I'm going to use I'm going to use Komodo Dragon. So let's go here. Let's download the 64-bit version of this. Once that's installed, I can go and open it up. You could potentially set this up with a VPN as well if you were kind of concerned about your IP address being shared. I, I, it depends how much kind of privacy you want. Are you kind of looking to remain private from the general public or do you want to kind of remain private from the US government and the kind of three letter agencies? If you kind of want extreme privacy, then you may want to kind of think about hiding, hiding your IP address for a VPN and going to further stages than that. What I'm going to look at here is mainly kind of just having an anonymous profile, which is a little bit half-hearted, but maybe you'd use it to just make contribute to a DeFi project or something like that. I don't want to make Komodo my default browser, but I do want to run it. So let's close Chrome now. And we've got this familiar looking browser. You go to google.com here. The next step we want to take is to set up an account on Gmail. Let's create an account for personal use. We need a name and we're going to use We're going to need a password here. I'm going to use a random hash. Obviously everyone can see this, so it's not secure at all, but that would give you a pretty uh, good password. I don't want to put a phone number in here. For certain uh, applications, like if you want to use Telegram, Telegram, for example, you are going to need a phone number. One of the things I found is that in the UK, you can get these kind of prepaid SIM cards and they're pre-activated for six months and you get kind of a phone number. You can just put them into your phone or an old phone and you can use that phone number to receive text messages. So it's good for doing this kind of thing where you have to confirm your account via a text message. Let's uh, put today's date, random year, uh, rather than let's say gender, express personalization, confirm we're happy with the settings, I agree. Gmail might not be the most secure option if you want to kind of uh, protect your IP address and things like that, there are better mail providers to do that. Now we've got our email set up and we can use this to go and create a GitHub profile. So let's go to GitHub. Let's, oh, let's sign up for an account. Put our email that we just created in. You can put a new password in. You don't want to use the same password for everything, obviously. And then let's enter a username and I'm just going to do first part of my email, you can think of something more useful here. Complete the puzzle and create an account. 
We sent the code to our email address, which is why I need to set this up in the first place. Let's go and get that. GitHub launch code, copy that in, paste it in here. Don't want a paid account. And we have got a very nice intro screen to our GitHub repository. We can now, let's go and have a look at a open source repository. And we could potentially write some unit tests and create a pull request for Uniswap, for example. I probably wouldn't uh, be very happy about that, but for a smaller DeFi project, which is maybe doesn't have quite the same um, stringent uh, specifications and things like that, they'd probably be really happy if you kind of de de developed and built some unit tests for them to kind of test their code. Uh, I know I certainly would be for the projects that I work on. So you can contribute to third party code. You can also use this kind of profile to set up other third party accounts. Let's say you want a Medium account or a Discord account or Twitter. One of the benefits of using Google is we can now kind of sign up with Google and let's put in the same date of birth. We can use that kind of sign in with Google and sign in with GitHub tools so that we can create accounts really easily. And there we go, we set up a Twitter profile with just a few clicks and we can go into our profile, we can add maybe an NFT picture or something to complement our online anonymous development personality. So there we go, I hope this video has been informative. If you wanna learn more about blockchain development and decentralized finance, then consider subscribing to the channel and please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching.